The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, noon until 1 p.m. My pleasure to be here, 877-927-6648. Internationally, 727-877. Silver chart up 16.21, up 0.24 in a huge leg D breakout pattern. Leg C in the weekly chart trying to tackle the 16.40 something, 16.45 uh, high of the week of the 22nd of February. This is a spectacular week. I, I, this is just the most unusual weekly chart that we've seen in months. We did get something like this back in December, I think it was. Yeah, December of last year, going from 14.5 up to 15.8. Um, so this is really much, much better action. It's leading. It's carrying gold. Gold is right now up seven, uh, up 5.6. And we've got this rectangle formation, little mini peak A, B. We're looking at the, the barrier of 1442s and the support of 1384s. And it's stuck in that range. We'll see how long this can last. And we'll see if it breaks out from here, which silver did. But gold has been stuck in this range for a little while. Now, what we want to do is uh, go back to the Dow. The Dow right now is down 104. This is, let me go through a couple of things that, that I always like to look at. Remember, I spoke about a peak D at this moment, but from the low bar of June the 3rd, where the Dow was at 24,701, that's the day we went long, uh, quite an uh, aggressive long position, weighted peak A, then peak B at 26,907, then peak C at 26,966. Breaks into uh, the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone, gets repelled for about three days, four days. Bam, the fifth day goes right out and goes to a tiny little doji candle on the 15th, 15th of July. Closes at 27,359. And then the following day, we were looking for a leg D. And I had said to subscribers, on a short-term basis, we're going to keep our core long position, but we're going to have a trading position. And look at this, right here, and this little doji candle, the Dow high was 29.398 on the 16th. We went short at 27.391, seven points from the top. But I've made a big deal, I'm going to go there right now. I've made a really big deal. Is this the one? Oh, man, if I messed up by putting in too many charts. No, this is it. And what I had said was, that within the context of using moving averages, that it takes a long time. Look how long it took from the high that was made back in uh, April, around about the 24, 4th of 27, uh, 695. Remember, that's the day before um, it turned down sharply, gapped down. Look, the MACD, the, so I keep I always call this MACD because it looks like a MACD. It's the sto stochastic is the... Uh, MACD and Stochastic are the tools that you see on my chart. Yet the, underneath the actual chart, you'll see these tools. Here I'm looking at uh, two moving averages. Look, for the moving averages to cross negative, 
Look what happened. You had to go all the way to the exact high of 26,689 back on the, 20, on, the, on the 1st of May before you got a significant turn down. We were lucky we were short just the day before uh, going into there, and we held it short. And uh, basically what we looked at was it took four or five days before the Dow actually crossed negative, the, the technicals crossed negative. So I'd say that we could see a lot of choppiness here before we actually turn down. And even though it feels like, oh, my God, this is just not even two days' worth of rally from the, the previous week where you, you skyrocketed hundreds and hundreds of points to the upside. So right here, I'm suspecting that this is really important in terms of saying that it is the start of a potential turn down. But I don't know yet whether this is the top, even though a lot of the action that I'm looking at, look at all the resistance, automated chapter wave resistance levels. Yeah, 27,339, 27,296. Um, this is really important. The doji candle, everything fits. The, the ugly candle of yesterday, by, followed by so far, a red candle today. Everything fits it. This should be some kind of a short-term top. But don't, I will not defy these fantastic moving averages strength. So with that said, um, you need to see the Dow close below 26,850, somewhere around there. Then I'm going to say, aha, that could be a more meaningful short-term uh, top. Still calling it only short-term because it's still leg E in the weekly chart. S&P, SPX.X, there we go. The S did I do that again? I did. Let's click on the right chart. All right, there it is. And here comes the S&P. S&P is down five now. It was down 10 just a moment ago. 2978.73 right on the 14 period exponential moving average. The MACD is crossed negative. Look at this. Crossed positive over there after the 3rd of June low. Now it's crossing negative. And what do we have? We have the M formation in the weekly chart. It says, yeah, getting a little toppy. You have the Chapman Wave inside track repellents. And yep, getting a little toppy. Has the monthly into the Chapman Wave inside track very long term from January a year ago. Um, to this to this particular level right now, all of this says be somewhat careful here. This is a very mixed market, as I said to subscribers yesterday. I'm a little concerned. A couple of things are going on, but most importantly, on Monday, Donald Trump said, "If it wasn't for me coming in as president, the stock market would have been down, would have crashed." Well. I, you know, I've been, I was the first one to openly talk about when uh, Obama was uh, just dismissive of the stock market, and yet all these protests against capitalism and capitalism and capitalism, and yet the market had a fantastic run during his tenure. And I said, you know what? Um, Trump has claimed the market as his own. I don't like this. This, this, this results in hubris. It, it results in getting a smack on the nose, even if it's short term. So that made me a little nervous, coinciding with the fact leg F in the uh, S&P, now a peak F, the QQQ uh, peak F, now, uh, sorry, leg F at 194.19, now a peak F, the IWM made a D, I believe it was, an E, sorry, an E has gone sideways to down since then. That just makes me a little hesitant. I don't like this. I don't like it when the president's bragging. Bragging in the market says, watch out. Those elves are going to smack you on the nose to use a Biden fit. I'll be right back. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. C C C call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks, we're back. So uh, a couple of questions I got. Well, let me just deal with them one at a time. Tom wanted to know about uh, t the TLT. Uh, well, he said, uh, Mr. Chapman, you have to call me Mr. Chapman. Basil's just fine. Offense to defense? Sell stocks and buy bonds and gold. Gold more volatile for me. Buy the TLT over 130. So, Tom, I, you have very, impo very important and key points that you're making. But let me just deal with them one at a time. First of all, the TLT at 134.24 two weeks ago made a, a kind of a high that says to me, watch this closely because this doji candle in the weekly chart, long-legged doji candle with a very ugly bar following, now testing the nine-period moving average, at 130, 133, having made a low the other day in the 129s, just under the nine period moving average, suggests to me that the whole, oh, I wonder if I can do this now. Let me just try to see if I can do it. Yeah. So I'm going to show you this chart. Uh, I want to take this out. This is the lowercase h pattern that we were talking about. Uh, that's all history. Let me just, I don't like too messy a, a chart pattern. Even my desk, I decided yesterday I had to clean up a little bit once in a while I get kind of bombed out from untidiness so here we are so this is a little bit better and now you can see this last cup and handle broke out and it's gone to a leg C in the TLT monthly chart the MACD is good and the stochastic is at 93% all that is good my contention is now I'm going to grab this and see if it's going to give me the result that I want this is the 10 year yield yes it does and you can see that all we've done in the yield is made very big cup formations. And these cup formations are testing the low of 20.68 right now, testing the low of the 19. Let me see if I can find it. I didn't type it in, but I should have. 19.43, 1.943 in the 10-year contract. And it's at a higher level. My contention right now is that I think that yields just like the Fed are kind of stuck in a range and the Fed is going to let things just play out without aggravating anything right now. Okay, that's kind of what I'm looking at. So Tom, I don't know if I would be doing any, any high dive into the TLT or the TBT or anything like that. Just for the moment, I think it's just kind of stuck. If you're a very short-term trader, yeah, there's a, there's a trade. But if you're looking at position places, you're talking about sell stocks, buy bonds, etc. Uh, I'm just going to say to you, 
Gold is in play, that's for sure. It's getting a little toppy. A little toppy doesn't mean say a lot toppy. So if you're looking at gold now, uh, trading at 1428 on the continuous contract, look what we've done. There are so many patterns here that are so similar, but this ball formation right here, not a cup, but it's more like a ball because it extends and it's taking its time, is starting the move to the right. Now, this to me is going to be very interesting because if gold really takes off from here, then I have to say to myself, wait a minute, you're rotating through all these different things. Bitcoin can go from uh, the 3,000s to the, uh, the 12,000s. Uh, it can go from the 19,000s down uh, to three. You know, it's got, you've got a bunch of things going on. So let me just make it as simple as possible. Gold is in play. I'm not sure yet whether this is a, a low interest rate, a directly related thing, whether it's more a fear, uh, a kind of a contract of fear. But I do think it's in play because it's broken and it's closed twice now. Well, it hasn't closed this month, but so far it's got two, uh, one close and one trading right now, way above the 14, uh, 14, let's call it 1410 high that was made back in July, August uh, to December of last year. It's nicely above that. It's, it's actually above the high that was made back in August of 2013. No, it's not. 1525. So that's the level that it could get to, 1525. So I think it's in play. I think it's a little extended in some of those stocks that I'm looking at. I wouldn't be surprised if they, I don't know if they have the big pullback now, but they could have some kind of a digestive phase. So I'm not sure that this is as simple as that. And if you look at the XLK, I, I want to show you the divergences that we have. The XLK is in a leg B in the monthly chart and an all-time high as we speak. There's no other way to count. This is a G. The, Q, the QQQ on a monthly basis is just squeaking to a leg B, slightly higher than the different uh, levels, the different highs that we've had, but it is going to higher highs with higher lows. So I think that to just make a blanket statement now in this kind of market defeats the purpose of being judicious in your, your choices. I would rather say to you, don't don't extrapolate what's happening now for the longer term in terms of sectors that have been underperforming. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Look, IWM has underperformed. It's been underperforming for a while, and it can keep underperforming. So when all of a sudden when you get the GLD, which was a big underperformer, suddenly going towards its most, uh, uh, I can't call it recent because we're talking about my yearly charts, uh, the, yeah, I can call them recent over the decade. Recent highs uh, back at the 130 level and now at 134.71, that is saying it is in play. Now, to your question about uh, volatility and the TLT, let me just go back to the TLT. You can see that the TLT has really been stuck in a range, but 111 to 131, 18% or something like that um, gain in, t in bonds, that is big, and it's making this big cup formation. And I wouldn't be surprised that just in this particular phase, instead of seeing the usual transition from the volatility of equities into, into um, bonds, this is what we might be seeing is that some of that money is being split and going into gold. I think, to me, that's the picture that, for me, makes the most rational sense right now. It's just divvying up the pie in a moment where it says, mm, there's a lot of volatility and politics-wise, things are a little uh, crazy. If you want to look at it that way, what should I do? That's what a lot of people are actually saying to me. Um, it, it, you know, what, what should I do? And I say to them, if you're in the market, stay in the market. But if you're getting a little nervous, it takes, take a little bit off. When you feel comfortable again, just put it back in. Just make it easy for yourself. So I don't know if it's as blanket as that. Offense to defense, I will say to you, that as this unfolds and as I'm expecting the Dow, the S&P, and the uh, QQQ plus, I don't know about the IWM just yet, if the Dow starts to trade in the 26,800 level, the S&P starts to trade in the coming two weeks uh, under uh, 20, 2972 in the, in the 2960s. If the QQQ actually starts to trade, I mean trade, I mean a whole week, 
of trading and the QQQ under 189, then I think we're in for a deeper and longer consolidation. So now the question I had is, would you sell a core TLT position? I don't think so. I think the Fed is in a situation that at some point you're going to see they're going to use this as leverage and they will have buying come back into bonds. So as a strategy, if you're feeling a little nervous, there's just no reason why at this particular point near the highs of the last year, the TLT, you know, if you've got a core position and you think, you know, it's a little heavy, take a little bit off. Just make it easy for yourself and let the market tell you. I do think that the weekly chart is saying that if the TLT closes under 128.50, you've got a deeper consolidation and yields will go quite a bit higher. And I'll talk about the TBT in a moment. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Conditions Hour, Dow's down now only 93, SMB's down Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. I had a question about NVTA, NVIDIA Core Diagnostic uh, Genetics. I believe this is the second bimode le leg D that we're making right now. The MANG-D is not as good as it was before. Stochastic's way down 65%. Uh, on balance volume is good. Relative strength is good. Weekly chart has this cup formation. I think it's going to take a little while. I wouldn't be surprised if it has a little bit of a pullback coming up soon. But it's acting well, and I believe it will go to a leg C in the monthly and a leg D in the weekly if it can get over 26.77. To do that, and at 24.48 right now, I would like to see tomorrow or Monday 
instead of a pullback right away to say, yep, that's a PD and it's pulling back with lousy technicals, I would like to see it steady up. Don't go under 2380 by Tuesday. And by Wednesday or Thursday next week, just as a sneak into the 2526s area. And if that's the case, you're looking at a good chance of going to leg D in this move right now rather than taking a little bit of a timeout. Uh, maybe two weeks before it actually breaks into the 26s. But I like it. And what was the question? Just the analysis of it. Yeah, you already have it. So this is, that's very good. Um, I don't want to mess around with it because you've been in it for a while and it's done very well. My only thing here is that if it does pull back under 23.30, and it's at 24.46 right now, in the next week without making a new I wouldn't say new high. Let's just say without going over 25.30 first, um, my guess is that it's going to be consolidating again. This has the propensity to power higher just constantly. But once it starts to stall, it can take a little while before it regains its energy. So I like it very much. I don't think um, unless by a week from today, Thursday week, is trading under 21.30 to, in other words, it takes out the low of the 16th of 21.46 and goes even lower. That would suggest, yep, that's a timeout in the daily and it's going to impact the weekly and that'll be a little bit longer, maybe not too deep a pullback, but time-wise it'll take a little longer. Next question I had was, uh, Tim wants to know, would you take a look at SH and suggest a price stop? SH is... This is the ProShares Trust Short S&P 500. So, Tim, I'm gathering that you're in it. And uh, a stop I would use. Now, this is going to be difficult for me because we're in an area, as I showed you, the 9 and the 14 period moving average are so strong. You could get those rogue wave bounces that do doesn't see that the tide has turned. They just have to complete the up move. And that would take you out. So let me say one of your positions... Oh, that's a lot. No, I don't think so. Should have a stop. The low is 25.93. Just for the next two days, today, tomorrow, three days, and Monday, I would have a stop at about 25, 25.91. Two, two pennies below the low of four days ago. Just now, one part of your position. Another part of your position should have a stop in the 120-minute chart, ABC, this is leg D. You should have a stop at between 26.11 and 26. Is that 12? Yeah, 26.12 and 26.10. Somewhere there, you should have some kind of a stop on a little bit of your position. But if there is no sharp pullback and this thing starts to trade, the high today so far 26.33. Let's just imagine that by Monday, for whatever reason, there's a push into the, the S&P comes down further without having that pop to the upside, comes down further, and you're looking at 26.35. At that point, I would raise the stop on one part of my position. This is just the beginning of a move, or it's a bounce. We don't know yet because it's done this before. This time, the technicals are way better for a rally that is more sustained. So I'm saying to you, try to keep the core position. One, one little part of it is at 26.11. I'd, I'd probably take a little bit off. But if this goes, it closes at the high of the day, 26.33 closes up 33 or point 38 or higher. It just closes at the, at the high of the day. Then I'd allow it to hold it overnight. But in the meantime, I would still put a stop in, a reasonable stop, uh, make the stop 26.12, where that support was that I was looking at, if it rallies strongly into the close, um, and we'll deal with it again tomorrow. But as it stands right now, the technicals have turned up nicely, not great, but nicely enough for me to say that if there's a close over the 14 period moving average today, 26.27, there's a close, uh, uh, that's exactly where it is. If there's a close above it, that's the first time that the uh, SH has been above the black 14 period exponential moving average, not closing, but above it, since it broke down on June the 5th, and that would be a good sign. Okay, I hope that helps you. Next question I had was, uh, where was it? Where was it? Where was it? Oh, could I just show this again? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, yeah, we've gone. Where are we? Oh, we were, look, we went to a peak B. 
Chuck, but if you're always looking for at least a D, and you go to a C1 and a C2, what is that? That's parallel highs. We haven't made a C, uh, a D yet. I'm just calling it for argument's sake. Now I think we're going to do that right now. C2. Let's see what happens. That'll go to a D. If there's another move above this high right here, 20, 29.84, uh, I think it's doing it right now. Yes, in fact, it's done. Okay. So, um, 4 zero, 4 zero, zero, 4 zero. <laughs> These 25 cents of the sauce leg D. Yeah, this is doing kind of, this is nice. Good action here. All right. Now let's go to the VIX index. What was the question? The VIX index, oh, all the calls and the puts, et cetera, on the VIX. Um, I'm just saying to you, the VIX is trading at 14.01. It made a high today of 14.50. Oh. It's stuck in a range, and if we can get to 14.55 in the next two days, I think it starts to break to the 15.78 200-period moving average quite quickly. At this particular point, I... Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it's just uh, getting, it's preparing for any sudden bad news so that it could rally. I think it's in play right now. That's really the question. Yeah, it's in play. And um, so here's a good one. The J and K, this is the junk, look at this, junk bonds trading right now, having made a peak B and then pulled back sharply. Is that a B or is that an alternate count? Yep, that's a B. So this is a B, and then it kind of fails, and it has an inside. No, it hasn't got any inside. So the weekly chart went right to the 200-period moving average of the Spider Barclays High Yield Bond Fund, trading at 108.12, down 22 ticks. And it went to D, and then a peak D at the 200-period moving average of the weekly. Yes, this is pulling back a little bit. I had a question, what are these S's and L's? That's just the confirmation of the technicals when the MACD, sorry, I keep going, when the... Um, when the uh, shorter time frame moving average crosses the uh, longer time frame, uh, either up or down. I just I had it automated, but that's you know, I, I use other things for clues. This is just a confirmation pattern. All right. Now, I, I said that I had a question about could you go through um, how you got the cell signal? Hmm. All right. I think we can. We'll do that as soon as we get back from the break. But right now... The Dow is trying to bounce off. What did it do? It filled this entire gap, the gap from the opening of the uh, 12th of July, where the low was 27,135, 27, and the previous bar was a high of 27,088. We have just filled that in. Now you can have a little bit of a bounce. I'll be right back. We're talking about the technicals involved based on the Chapman Wave methodology. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South 
African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Yeah, so let me just do this. This is F slash B, and this is a G slash C. Wow. So I got an email just a moment ago saying, Hi, Basil. While you may expect me to ask about ARWR, Yahoo! I won't today. Why does he say Yahoo? It isn't Yahoo, uh, the stock. It is Yahoo on ARWR, trading up $1.10 at 29.62. Uh, when uh, when uh, this was asked before, when I, I, let me see. When Dan asked me about it before, I think it was here at Peak C, and we were. This was like late May, and we were kind of in the area of the 21, 21 ish. And I said, "Yeah, this looks very good. Again, should go to a D. I do like it." And we kind of left it at that. And now it's at 29.60, really nicely higher. Wow, what a nice move. Anyway, that's not what you're asking me about, but I discussed it anyway. Can you please take a look at Beyond? B, Y. Now, I have not actually had this. I've had a taste of something like it. I think it was at Whole Foods that were giving a taste of a product that was very close to Beyond Meat, uh, Inc. And uh, against the weekly expiration, oh, can you please take a look at Beyond against weekly expiration options? I've initiated a small short that is a bit underwater. Thanks, Dan. So, Dan, I can understand why you're doing it. Now, this is a couple, there are a couple of things I wanted to talk about. Number one, yeah, I've got time. Number one is this is a product that is in play. It's getting, I, I hear it spoken about everywhere. In fact, this morning I, I heard it, I think it was on NPR, somebody was talking about it, or is it yesterday, whatever it is. Um, and it's in play. Now, I, I meant to take a little time to see exactly what the ingredients are, because if it has any kind of uh, manufactured ingredient uh, that is sort of chemical-based, I just it beats me, other than um, you've got a great, great marketing tool here. And I think that, to me, this is more a marketing tool at this point, but I believe that, that some places are out of the product. It's just a, it's in play. All right, it is the sexy thing for now. It is called Beyond Meat, and it's trading at 171.35. I would be careful with with uh, um, puts. I'd probably say to you, based on everything I'm looking at here, the surprise while it could back from one, it could pull back from 171 even to the 60 level. The surprise might be that it just has some news event that allows it to spike to retest the 200 to 202 level. 201.88 was the high of the 18th of June. So now you're in the short position. This is what I would say to you. At 171.32, let me just do this here quickly, see what I can come up with. Uh, folks, just showing you this is the S&P 2975 
There's the key support, and it's at 29.81 right now. This is the automated Chapman Wave uh, stuff. I'm just about to punch in B, Y, N, D, beyond. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, so this is stuck in range. 172 is 10-minute resistance, 169 is support. 173 is 120-minute uh, resistance, and 167 is support. Um, the way I'm looking at it, it looks like it's got a peak A, peak B. It's gone to a peak C, and it could just touch a D. I'm not sure that you're wrong saying that you were short uh, weekly options, but I think that you might find it wears you thin because we're in a sideways trading band. You didn't tell me what number it was that you were short. Um, take a look if you're on against weekly expiration options. Initiated a small short that is a bit underwater. All right, let's just say... You're at a 175, and now it's 171. I'm going to make the suggestion. No, no, you're at 169, and now it's at 171. Wrong way around. So you're, you're a little bit underwater. And if there is a pullback in the next three days, no, I'd probably say Friday and Monday. By Monday, if there's any pullback, and you can see this thing get back to 169, I would cover a little bit of that position. I've just got the way it's looking, the way it's acting, my suspicion is there's going to be a sudden spike, and then it comes back to this level. And then you're going to wonder, what the heck? I had a chance to do something, and I didn't. So I'm just saying to you, I'd lighten up. I'm not sure there has to be a peak D, but I can just tell you this. If this thing goes over once, it's at 171.37. It moves in big leaps when it actually moves in a trend. If at any point in the next two days it starts to trade above one, first of all, 173.80, probably is going to take you higher. But if it goes to 173.80 and then keeps going to 174.50, be careful because it's probably going to go to a D and then stick around a little bit before it comes back and does some testing. So I'm not with you on this one. It's tough. I'm actually, for subscribers, I've been waiting for an opportunity to go long on a sudden spike. But I think this peak F top at 2188, I drew in the rectangle. Rectangle formations can last a lot longer than your patience. Going from 139 to 200 would be fantastic, um, but that's the range you've got. 139s to 200, uh, and this point is stuck right in the middle. I wish you luck. I just hope that uh, suddenly there's a bad news event and it starts to pull back. But the monthly is only in leg A and the week is only in leg B, and I think it will go to at least the C. So I'm looking for higher prices. I don't know how and choppy. it'll be choppy to get there. And I, I, when people start analyzing what the ingredients are, if there's anything that disappoints, it's in trouble. So it better be perfect. This is price to perfection anyway. The next question I had was, uh, we did the SH, we did that, we did, oh, advanced micro devices. Yeah, advanced micro devices is trading right now after a peak, uh, probably a peak E top in the day, just three days ago. The MACD is turning down, but still good. Stochastic at 80%, nearly close to going under 80%. That'll be a tip off that more sunnings coming in. And then weekly is in a G slash C. And I'm going to call it a G slash C for now because the technicals are strong enough to say, hey, um, that weekly chart could hang around for a little bit longer. And here's the other thing G slash C. Okay. Um, here's the other thing. That monthly has gone for that rectangle pattern to go back to the top. Uh, it's both a cup formation and a rectangle formation. So, uh, and this is kind of helping the SMHs. So let me just do this. Advanced micro devices, as far as I can tell, on a shorter term basis, is bumping into a lot of resistance in the 33 to 34 area. If it closes any day in the next three days, any day closes under 32. Now, let's make it 31.85. So we're actually in that area. Under 31.85, I think it's going to come back a little bit more. If for some reason it's able to get to 33.65, today's high is 33.46, if it can go just a little above that, that'll be good. Make It means that you could get a cup with a little handle pattern here. But I think that for advanced micro devices, it's getting kind of in the toppy area. So, oh, Triple M. Yes, good question about Triple M. Triple M is what they say. It was uh, Triple M, Triple M, 173.2, breakdown of the 160 support to come question. You know, I'm going to say that I think 169, 168 is in the cards. I don't want to go that far yet to say that it's going to go lower. This is disappointing. 
because my Dow Quartet, Caterpillar, PD, IBM came out with some good news yesterday. Uh, just gone to a leg D on the 200 period exponential moving average in the daily, the weekly. Uh, Triple M we just looked at and UTX, another D. Uh, UTX is, yeah, beta peak D. Too many Ds. I'll be back. We'll talk about these Ds. Tell the chap and be right back. Am I seeing? No, I didn't. Oh, Rich in Oregon, I'll be with you. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge, heard here at TFNN.com. Uh, yes, sorry, uh, sorry, Rich. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I didn't see you. You, you were there, Rich from Oregon. Uh, fifth, what is it called? Fifth. I'll do this quickly. Fifth, third bank. Let me see if I can find it. Fifth, fifth, third. Bank. Let's see if I can get that. Oh man, fifth third bank is it a letter. Fifth. Nope, I don't get it. Oh man, I I, I didn't see F I T H. Oh, there it is. Fifth third bank. There is F I T B. Okay, I didn't have the symbol correct. All right, Rich. I hope you're listening. So fifth third bank trading at twenty seven ninety five up thirty seven cents. Um, now, the question, I'm not, I'm not sure what your question is, just let me say whether I buy it or, or sell it. A, B, C, D, E, peak E, it's holding the 200 period moving average, uh, sitting at 27.96. Uh, the weekly chart is A, B, C, this is a D, but it's coming back again. You know, I think that this is stuck in a range. The moment it can get to 28.65, I think it kind of breaks out. That's going to be very important. 
And I suspect it's going to hold the 27s as support, 27.30 to $27. Now, would I buy it? Would I sell it? The other ones that I prefer to hold, uh, we do have a bank stock right now that's doing very nicely. Um, but I... Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, this is what I'm going to say. Uh, it, call me again tomorrow if you have a chance. I'm so sorry I didn't get you. I will get to you. The moment you can call me first, we can do hit, start off for you right away. But I'm going to do a little work on this. At this particular point, it's holding well. I would actually start a position here at 27.95 because of the way it's acting today. But in this particular position, I would start it and I would open it up with a one-point stop. So it's like a 3% stop just initially with my position. And if it starts to strengthen into Friday and Monday, that's where I would probably add to it. I think this is starting to try to make headway to get to the 2850, 2870 area. But with a tight stop, just keep it there. So, folks, you're going to go to Steve Rhodes. You're going to go to uh, uh, Dave White. You've got Tom O'Brien. Check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. Even with the market down, Dow's down 100 points. We've been able to play this so far as well as we can using the Chapman Wave methodology. And we do have a, quite a few stocks that are up quite nicely today despite the market down to one's up even 1.65 percent um that's nice um okay thank you very much for being here and i'm going to hand you over to steve rhodes have a great day see you tomorrow check out my opening call larry pesavento